What's going on guys, Christian here. Bear with me, my wife has this house freezing cold, but we are here today to rank one of my all-time favorite horror franchises, the Saw franchise. And I just wanna warn you, I am a big fan of the franchise, underscore franchise. So my ranking is deadly honest for what I love, but it's probably gonna be different from some of the ones you've seen on the internet. So just know it's the honest truth. So without further ado, this is my Saw franchise ranking. All right, guys, so coming in dead last, it's going to be Jigsaw. You know, I just finished binging all of these movies for this franchise ranking. I wanted to go back and watch all of them and really just sink my teeth into these films. Jigsaw comes in last. I, I saw from four on every one of these in the theaters. Jigsaw was fun in the theaters when I watched it. It was really great seeing a Saw movie in the theater again. It had been, what, seven years since, since Saw 3D, Saw 7. And I was excited, and I enjoyed it in the theater, I really did, but, you know, leaving the theater, I noticed things about the film that don't quite add up in certain aspects. Like, for instance, you know, this film really takes place in the beginning of everything, really early on in the saga, and it just seemed like some of the traps didn't have that crude nature that, you know, you were seeing in the beginning of the series. You know, there were flat screen TVs in the film, and it was 2004, so they were around, just logistic things that, you know, I think, you know, I understand they look the why the film looked the way it did. It was made in 2017, etc., etc. I mean, it was great seeing John Kramer in the film, and he had a great line with, here's your key to freedom. And I loved that. Always good endings in Saw movies. Overall, though, Jigsaw, it, it was kind of dead on arrival. After the movie was over, I was like, well, there's really nowhere to go from here. Nobody's going to accept another, you know, Hoffman or or Amanda, so to speak, because this guy, this veteran that we have in here, it didn't really come to fruition very well. I don't think people latched onto it, so I enjoyed Jigsaw in the theater. I'll, I'll watch it and have a great time, but it's gotta be last on this list. <laughs> Coming in next on my ranking is actually gonna be Saw 4. You know, Saw 4 was the very first one I saw in theater, so I do have a lot of nostalgia for Saw 4. I think what it really boils down to is you know, first of all, three, which a lot of these movies besides four and Jigsaw haven't been on the ranking yet, so you don't know where. But I will say, you know, coming off of three, I mean, that was a really high plateau. And four, you know, I like that it's a continuing story. I love that this franchise was almost like a soap opera. Each chapter just kept going forward and forward with the story. That's amazing. I didn't really connect with the tale, so to speak, with four. My thing was I liked uh, Rig as a character. But, you know, Jigsaw or Hoffman really getting involved in the manner of, you know, go be with your wife, stop trying to help your friends that are dying. I didn't really love the story so much of 4. And not to mention, when you see Agent Strom in 4, I loved that character. I loved Agent Strom in 4. So I was already really connecting to that character more than Rig. Not that I liked Rig, but it's just the story of the film. Didn't really, I didn't love it. Uh, but there are some good kills in here. One of the, I think one of the highlight kills in this movie is actually the girl who has her hair tied up and that device that pulls it. There were some good tense moments. Four is not a bad movie. It's just second last on my list. But I like all of these films. I'll be honest with you. I really do. But that was Saw 4. That's the next one. Coming in next, guys, is actually going to be the latest one, Spiral. Uh, upon a couple rewatches of Spiral, it's gone down on my ranking a little bit, you know. I give credit to Spiral for actually, you know, uh, Chris Rock re trying to revitalize the series. I know that he championed the script for this, and he really liked the idea of the movie. Spiral does a lot of cool things. I like uh, its story going after the bad cop uh, in the movie. I like the, the quirkiness of the film. I, I, I Quite honestly, I, I liked Chris Rock in the movie. The movie started out with jokes about Forrest Gump, and I was like, okay, this, this, is, this is different. But it, it still had that kind of saw feel to it. Some good trap kills in here, but this movie is certainly not, is certainly not a highlight for some of the traps. Uh, but overall, Spiral is fun. It's a fun entry. Uh, it's got some problems. It's not a perfect film, but I do applaud it for doing, uh, for trying to revitalize it with some fresh elements and, and having a different shade of gray. So Spiral, it's certainly gone down on my list initially from when I first saw the film. But right here, this is where, this is where Spiral belongs in my ranking. Coming up next, guys, is actually going to be one of my favorite theater experiences. My brother took me to this movie to see it. We saw it in 3D. That is Saw 3D. Now, I'll be honest with you. I really don't like having Saw 3D this low on my list because I'll be honest with you. From this point on, 
These are all bangers to me. I love all of these, and Saw 3D is certainly one that I love. It was just a matter of really placing the rest of these in that order that really connects with me as the viewer. So that's why Saw 3D ends up where it's at. Good story with Saw 3D. You get to see some returning characters from the first film, which was really cool. Also, I mean, you really get to see some really great uh, trap scenes in here. Also, Chester Bennington, rest in peace. He has a really cool moment in uh, Saw 3D. I loved his moment where his back was all like super glued to that car and he was trying to get off. Brutal. He did a great job in the movie too. He really, you know, ex he showed some pain in Saw 3D. Uh, this was a great 3D experience in the theater. I'll tell you that. Great 3D experience. Um, I liked the resolve of the story with Hoffman. I love Hoffman. I'll tell you, we'll talk more about Hoffman as we go along in here, but I love Hoffman. Hoffman's my boy. I, I, I give a little bit of more story in my head to the character, as you'll probably hear, but Hoffman's cool. I like Hoffman. I like Kramer's wife, Jill, in this one. Some good tense moments between the two. I think it could have been a little bit better, but overall, I think 3D delivers. I think it really delivers, and the poor wife of the main character in this movie she has the most awful demise it was brutal so saw 3d definitely gets some points i like saw 3d <laughs> coming up next guys this is where it's gonna i'm gonna start to throw some of you off coming up next is saw 2 uh as upon re-watching this one i've always been a big fan of saw 2 still am but man i just you know as I've watched these movies more and more over the years, this one just kind of slowly falls back. There's nothing wrong with 2. 2 is, I think 2 is actually a fan favorite. One of the quirky things about this that I'll mention as, as a fan of this, as a, the song at the end, the Forget to Remember my Mud, by Mudvayne is just awesome hearing that in this film. Uh, Saw 2 is great. I'm a big fan of the collective group going through the, uh, the traps in the movies because... Uh, you know, you really get to see some entanglement with the characters. It adds to the levity of the survival, in, in my opinion. I love the group elements when it's groups of people trying to survive. I love that. Uh, the characters in 2 were all great. You see Amanda in 2. She has a kill that is a fan favorite. The, the syringe pit that she gets tossed in is just absolutely brutal. That syringe pit was brutal. I... <laughs> It hurts to look at, and it's really not one of the more gruesome ones in, in essence, but because of the physicality of it, I think that syringe pit is just one that people, uh Kramer's great in this. I love Kramer in this because he's really into the story in the forefront. He's, ta he's talking to the detective, and he's the one that's like front and face with him, like just listen to me, and you get your son, you need to talk to me though. So those elements are great. It's one of my favorite John Kramer performances throughout the series. So, I mean, two's great, just don't get me wrong, it's just, we'll get there. <laughs> Coming up next, guys, is the debut Saw, uh, James Wan's original Saw. I mean, it's still my favorite James Wan film. I love Saw. The original Saw is just one of my favorite films of the 2000s period. Massive fan of Saw. I, I, I really don't know what else to say. I mean, it's a great film. The thing is, I just love where the story goes with Saw. I really love the franchise. I love the evolving nature of the franchise. So the way the story continues in this franchise is something I just dig so much. So that's why, you know, Saw is where it's at. It's a masterpiece of horror in my opinion. Uh, but where we go is where, I, is where I really love this series. Coming up next, guys, is Saw 6. Now, Saw 6, I think... I remember going to the theater to see Saw 6. And what I loved about this film was the brass balls to attack the insurance industry in this film. I was floored by that. I thought that was gutsy. I thought that was ballsy. And I was so attracted to the story of Six. The story of Six sold me hook, line, and sinker. I was at the theater seeing this movie. No one was there. So many people were checked out by this point. I mean, people were checked out really by four. I mean, the, the box office was were good, but you could see the dwindle. By four, people were checking out. But me, I was sucked into this franchise. Saw 6 is, I think, an underrated horror movie at the end of the day. You know, you've got John Kramer attacking this insurance industry. I think it was called Umbrella. And these people, I mean, this guy, the whole thing is about this guy trying not to pay for people's health health services. And it's brutal. It's really tugging on your heartstrings. You get to see this father just saying, like, you just... You killed me. And it was brutal. It's a brutal mental, emotional scene. And Kramer just has, look, begging to get this suicide gene therapy to try to survive, to try to live. And the guy's just like, can't do it, man. And then the fact that Kramer made him have to go through 
picking who lives and dies in his tales and really seeing the choices he's making and how it affects people, I think was just amazing. I love Saw 6. I think it's ballsy going after the insurance industry. Something to think about. Saw 6 is awesome. All right, guys, coming up next is Saw 5. Now, this is one that I know I'm totally willing to accept that this is not a fan favorite. I totally understand that. I, again, I was at the theater for this. A lot of people were checked out for Saw 5. But I'll be honest with you, with me for Saw 5, guys, going back to Saw 4, when I was watching that one, when you see Agent Strom come into the picture of Saw 4, I was hooked on him. I was like, who is this Strom guy? I like this guy a lot. This is a no-nonsense kind of guy. His character was just awesome. And so when I saw Saw 5 and I saw that it was going to be about Strom and his journey to... He knew it was Hoffman. He was tracking Hoffman down. And I like Hoffman a lot. I think Hoffman is an awesome character. I think Hoffman, you know, people say he's a heartless, soulless character. And I can see why they think that. And I'm not saying that they're wrong. To me, I know that Hoffman had, he had heart and integrity at one point, And he lost it. He, but the thing is, I think Hoffman lost it deeper than Kramer did. Hoffman just really got into a black abyss. Five is by far my favorite opening. The pendulum blade coming down on the guy. So tense, so brutal. I was at the edge of my seat in the theater. And again, I'm looking around at an empty theater. I'm like, I can't believe no one's here to see this. Saw 5 to me is, is, is really underrated. I, I really love Saw 5. Uh, again, Agent Strom as a character is just, man, he's the man. When he's in that thing, the dome with the water filling up, and then you see him finally, he's resourceful. He gets the pen, shoves it in his esophagus to breathe. I just thought that Saw 5 was awesome. I understand it's nobody's favorite probably, and I'm willing to accept that. But for me, Saw 5 is awesome. All they had to do in 5 was work together, but they couldn't do it. Kind of like 2. So I like, the, I like a lot of those elements from 2 and 5, but again... The Agent Strom character, I, I could be alone on this, but I just love Agent Strom. My favorite character from the series, hands down. Just think he was awesome. <laughs> Number one, guys, is Saw 3. Saw 3, to me, is the pinnacle of the series. I just think everything got bigger, badder, and better. And by 3, I think it's, it's a mix between some of the best traps, some of the best effects, and the story, again, is gripping the father who lost his son. And when the dad has to go through each room with the people that were involved in not making his son's death any easier that he had to deal with, was gripping. I loved it. And it has my all-time favorite trap, if you want to call it that. And it's actually his favorite, the rack. Man, the rack is the worst. The worst. I mean, talk about the most painful thing on the planet. The rack is just brutal. I love it. The brain surgery scene, I think, is some of the best horror stuff ever. I mean, people call the Saw series torture porn, and I'm not here to argue that. Call it what you want. These are horror movies to me. But what I love about the... This is my Friday the 13th, my generation's Friday the 13th. Every year, I was going to see another entry in this series, and it was continuing the story. And, man, when I saw three... That was, the first, that was the last one I didn't see in the theater. Saw 3 was the most gripping, edge-of-my-seat entry in the entire series. Saw 3 just gets all the points for me. I love Saw 3. To me, it's the pinnacle of Saw. So that's, that's my number one, guys. <laughs> there it is, my Saw franchise ranking. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. I know this is probably going to be different from a lot of what you've seen on the internet. And that's cool. I'm not trying to be different. That was my honest, genuine ranking. And I love this series big time. I love revisiting these movies. The rewatch value is through the roof. Great characters, great stories. Saw is awesome. I, I, I do hope we get some more someday. I really do. In any, in any facet, whether it's a continuation from Spiral, whether we continue the story with the Jigsaw characters uh, or thereafter, all of that, I'm down for more. If not though, it's all good. I've got plenty to enjoy. I ask you, what is your favorite Saw? And tell me why. And did you, did you continue with these with this series as they were coming out? Or are you younger and then you've gone back and seen them all later on after they have been on release on video and stuff? I'd love to know, guys. But this is Christian Hannah Horror. This is my Saw franchise ranking, and I am damn proud of it. So thank you guys for watching this video. I love you, and we'll see you soon with uh, another ranking if you catch my drift. Peace. <laughs>